One Habit Challenge, dads. Good evening. It is Wednesday night. That makes it day Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, day five of our seven days. Tonight, we're going to talk about, <laughs> going to pick the right words for this, but the bloody people that instead of helping you, actually pull you back. So it's not as bad as saying toxic people, but you know, have you got people on side we've talked about people supporting you we've talked about people holding you to account but it came up in a question today from one of the dads in the challenge he was asking me about his diet and about not getting the support from his partner and you know you can imagine this is a common common issue i don't have a nice way of saying this right if you're married to the person then it really is quite difficult just to <laughs> just to just to push them out the door, right? Um, if you're at that stage, that's another conversation, and uh, I'd gladly have uh, have that chat with you. But in terms of your habits, in terms of someone supporting you, my girlfriend, uh, she's a personal trainer, she's a coach herself, so it's very easy for us to work out together, to go for runs together. She gets up early, like I do. Like there's so many of the habits that I've developed, right? Because I didn't always have these. There's so many of the habits that I've developed that she supports. And in my marriage, it wasn't really like that. Okay, so that's in that's in my closest, most intimate relationship. You will find as well with your friends, with your work colleagues, you're going to have people pulling against you. Now, as much as possible, you want to keep away from that whilst you're in the challenge or whilst you're trying to adopt this new habit right but if it is a work colleague for example or a partner yeah and you're giving up smoking if you're losing a lot of weight you can't always be certain that they're going to be on side now it takes a ridiculous amount of willpower to not smoke if the person you're married to smokes and you got to have a a pretty serious conversation with that person about your commitments to each other, uh, about your vision for the future, like really paint to them what's at stake. And by picking the subject of smoking, it's, probably, it's the most extreme, you know. Um, <clears throat> when my ex, uh, one, one of her, linked to her health problems, um, she was diagnosed as pretty much being allergic to sugar. And so she had to give up sugar. And, and it was hard, right? And one of the ways that I thought would be really supportive was to also give up sugar. And <laughs> funnily enough, <laughs> it didn't go down that well. But that was symptomatic of some bigger issues. But it was, for me, it was important that I bought into the vision of our future together, the picture of her being healthy, what it would mean to her, what it would mean to me, okay? Now, if you're having that conversation with someone yourself, that's what you've got to do. It will be very difficult to get someone on side by blaming them, by telling them what you wanted them to do or what you thought they should do. No one likes to be told what to do. You've got to inspire them into the possibility that you've seen for yourself out of this new habit. It could be losing weight. It could be having more money. It could be living longer. It could be being around for, um, obviously living longer, but being around for your children's children, your grandchildren. It could be about playing with your children. It could be about making love better, lasting longer. It could be about being more successful in business. It could be all of these things. As I've said to you every day of this challenge, your habits are an indication of your success and good habits in one area will cascade and ripple into other areas of your life. So when you're looking to get someone who's pulling in the opposite direction on side, that's what you've got to share with them. You've got to inspire them. You've got to have them see the same possibility that you've seen for yourself, for themselves. And it could be a difficult conversation. It could reveal something about your friendship that is not very nice. You know, if you're talking about a work colleague or a friend that smokes, 
if it's a, a, a romantic partner, a, a wife, it could reveal some cracks in your relationship, some resentments. It could also, though, give you the opportunity to take that relationship to the next level. OK, a conversation like this inside of the Team Superdad Hero Academy, um, this conversation is a, called a reconnection conversation. It's about really understanding what each other wants. It's about really understanding what each other feels about the other person, about what they love, like, enjoy about them, what they find frustrating and annoying, not without judgment or blame, but as an opportunity to really hear how that other person experiences you. Because we're quite close to that. We, we don't want to hear it. We feel uncomfortable. Um, and the best way I can illustrate that to you is by asking you to think about how you feel about someone close to you. What are some of the things that you haven't said to them that wind you up, that annoy you, that frustrate you, that you resent them for? And it could be as small as you don't put the lid back on the toothpaste, right? <laughs> or things like that. But depending on how long you've been with that person, those resentments can fester, okay? So that's meandered into a slightly deeper conversation. But you can see, depending on where you're at with the person, depending on how important that relationship is to you, you can either just ditch them because it's not important and they're pulling in the opposite direction. Or you can make a really quite simple, casual request. You can adjust your friendship. Don't go and have a cigarette break with them but still their friend. Obviously in the pub these days, it's a lot easier with having to go outside to smoke a cigarette. But whoever, whatever level of friendship, still share with them why you're doing this, what you're up to, because you're more likely to make a difference to them. And that in itself is part and parcel of this living with more energy, living with more focus and joy, is that who you are to other people, you're stepping up someone who's got something to say, someone who's making a difference for themselves and as a byproduct for other people. I'm not saying this conversation is necessarily easy, but it is a growth opportunity for you. It's a stretch for you. It's taking you out of your comfort zone. We spoke about comfort zone on Tuesday and what a shit show of a place the comfort zone is. Anything that makes you stretch and grow is an opportunity to create more in your life. And that's why this subject of habits is so incredibly powerful. Because just the smallest adjustment in these areas of life, some of which are huge, some of which are minor, some of which are actually just a bit of fun. But it's the power that you create for yourself. Being able to open the fridge and not take that chocolate or that beer. Being able to go out with friends who still smoke and not join them outside. Be able to go for a meal and not eat the bun of the burger. The fitness. You know, it's about doing the 10 minutes of exercise simply because you said you would do. Even at quarter to midnight, if you said you were going to do it three times a week and it's Sunday, you're going to do it at 11.45 because there's 15 minutes left and it's only going to take 10 minutes. That's the kind of power that I'm talking about. And that's the kind of person that would have a difficult conversation, not to be a twat, but to create, to reignite, to invigorate the relationship that you have with that person. And in doing so, the relationship that you have with yourself. You're not a pushover. You're not a pussy who can't not eat chocolate for 30 days. You're not the kind of dad that's going to carry on smoking and make your kids suffer less good. Let's <laughs> know that's bad, appalling English, but lower quality holidays. You stinking. You not being able to play football with them. You dying at 58 from lung disease. That's not the kind of dad you are. So when you're looking at the people around you and you're 
looking at them for support and encouragement and they're pulling in their opposite direction, make sure that you inspire them. And in order to do that, you've got to be inspired about what you're up to yourself. Okay, get them on side, share the vision, tell them how important it is for you that they're around, that you can count on them. If you've got any comments about this, then please do share it in the chat. Give me a hashtag replay if you're watching this. I've had some brilliant conversations one on one. I really would love you to use the group and at least wrap this up as we head towards the graduation party on Friday. By the way, we won't be doing that at eight o'clock because I've already had a few people say they're going to be going out. So we're going to be doing that at 6.30 on Friday night. We're going to do the end of challenge party on Friday, this Friday, 29th at 6.30. So comment below, hashtag replay, tell me how you're getting on. Let us know about those people in your life that are not pulling in the same direction or the people in your life that you've got on side. Team Super Dad out.